going on everybody it's eta prime back here again this is going to be a quick one but i thought it was worth making a video on because recently we got some really awesome news from qualcomm about a new snapdragon mobile chip specifically designed for mobile handheld gaming devices and at the time of making this video they're calling it the snapdragon g3x gen 1 and by the time these are released to the public i'm sure we'll either have a gen 2 or a g4x but this is really awesome news for mobile handheld gaming devices in the future and in conjunction with Razer, they've actually developed the first development kit using the G3X. Now what Razer has come up with here is a bit bulky, but keep in mind this is a developer kit. This is not going to be available to the public. The consumer models will definitely slim down. We're going to see a bunch of these in mid-2022, maybe the end of 2022, beginning of 2023. And I got a good feeling that devices with these chips are pretty much going to take over the handheld space due to power consumption and performance. But really, right now, we haven't seen any kind of benchmarks from the G3X. And most of the stuff that I'm seeing online with people who have had their hands on these is cloud gaming, which is a little disappointing in my opinion. Because right now you can even go out and pick up a cheap prepaid phone and get some really good cloud gaming performance out of it with GeForce Now, Stadia, and xCloud. But in the next few weeks, as developers start getting their hands on these, I suspect that we're going to see some more native Android game performance. And that'll give us a really good idea of where this chip sits in the ecosystem right now. Because Qualcomm hasn't released the clock speeds of the CPU and GPU, but I suspect it's going to be an 8-core CPU. We'll probably get a max clock of around 3.1 GHz, kind of like the 888+. But I'm pretty sure that they're going to beef up the GPU side of things quite a bit. And with a handheld like this, we will have more room for active cooling, which is going to allow this SoC to run at cooler temperatures. Therefore, we can up the clocks on the CPU and the GPU side of things. But this first development kit from Razer has a 1080p OLED display that does support HDR. It's 120 hertz, but this chip will do up to 144 like the A88. Wi-Fi 6C, Bluetooth 5.2, Snapdragon Sound, a 6000 milliamp hour battery, and obviously that G3X SoC. And as I'm reading through this right now, it does look like they stated that this will do up the 3 gigahertz. And we're not sure if that's going to be a single core, an X1 core, an X2 core. We really don't know what's going on with the G3X right now. And there's no word on the GPU clock speed. But when it comes to this new CPU itself, the G3X, it does have an Arduino GPU. We've got those cryo cores on the CPU side of things. It will support game quick touch. Support for variable rate shading, Qualcomm Game Color Plus, Qualcomm Game Smoother, 5G MM Wave, Qualcomm Fast Connect with Wi Fi 6E, a haptics engine, Snapdragon Sound technology, and one thing that's really interesting to me, which I love to see in all of my devices, is video out. And this will do 4K either over HDMI or USB Type C. It's going to really depend on the handheld itself and what the manufacturer wants to put in there. Some of them are probably going to add HDMI ports, some of them will just rely on USB Type-C video. But either way you look at it, this really is a game changer for the handheld market. This is going to make for some awesome handhelds in 2022, and I cannot wait to test something out. I would love to get my hands on one of these new Razer development kits and just test out some emulation on it, but you know, that's probably not going to happen unless I can find one for sale on eBay. So if any of you do find one for sale, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to pick it up. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I thought it was exciting enough news to make a quick video on. I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you excited about this or do you want to just stick with x86, be it a Ryzen chip or an Intel chip? Personally, I can't wait till the Steam Deck releases. I know the Steam Deck will outperform this, but in mobile gaming, we might have an advantage with this new Snapdragon technology. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.